I can see why so much is riding on these upcoming elections. Like, for instance, if a, a, a pro-China or a friendly China group of politicians get into power, like that would, I, I would see that having a tremendous impact on American interests in Japan. For instance, you know, China has vowed it will take Taiwan, period, even if it has to use military force. Uh, U.S. forces are stationed in Okinawa. I can't imagine that China would just allow U.S. troops to be stationed there and not, you know, fight Chinese troops in an invasion. So for a Japanese uh, parliament to allow for this kind of pro-China view, it would either have to accept that China would attack Japanese territory or they would try to kick out American forces. Like, it seems like you have those two choices. Right. Well, in Japan, uh, things are never black and white, uh, unfortunately. Uh, they tend to be gray. So the, the middle option is to not think about a, a situation or a scenario like that, to put their heads in the sand. And unfortunately, I kid you not, a lot of them do that. And so... Wow. Um, it, it may be it may be a, a uh, you know national uh, trend or or what have you, but Japanese people tend not to prepare for the worst, and they don't want to think about the worst. And so, until they've experienced something, they tend not to prepare for it or or to make adjustments for that. And I see that constantly. I've been here for thirty one years. I see that constantly. So it's kind of after something happens is when they start, you know, addressing the issue. And that it's not only Japan, it's other countries as well. But I think that that uh, that national trait is is much more prevalent here in, in Japan. Uh, but uh, more and more, they're aware of that, you know, that potential and they've they've basically always been aware of that potential that uh china chinese uh forces would try to strike uh you know u.s forces here um in the past though china didn't have those capabilities to do it uh now the situation's different they do have those capabilities and so um that that will trigger uh more debates like this i think um the opposition parties are very weak though in japan and so um, if we had a debate like this in the 1960s when the opposition was very strong, then that threat of kicking out for American forces would have been much more real. It's less real now because Japan is so dependent on the U.S.-Japan alliance. Um, but there are things that, that I try to argue that Japan and the U.S. should be doing uh, now avoiding a, an Armageddon-like situation and instead more proactively, um, you know, uh, pushing on the uh, deterrence front. So, for example, on October 4th, as I think you covered with uh, your show, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of Chinese uh, warplanes entered Taiwan's 80s. And uh, the Japan response in my opinion, and the U.S. response was extremely weak. Uh, on October 5th, the next day, the new administration of Prime Minister Kishida, uh, they made a very bland statement that the two parties need to you know, work it out peacefully, the two parties being Taiwan and, and, uh, and Communist China, and that Japan would continue to watch the situation closely. Uh, that was uh, a very weak statement. It's in line with what they've said in the past, but I think that the times are different now. Uh, so what I think uh, Japan and the U.S. should have done at that time were th at least three things. And basically to uh, raise the stakes for China, that if it did something like that, again, there's going to be consequences. So the first thing Ch uh, Japan should have done was uh, name China and criticize it publicly. Secondly, uh, U.S. Uh, warplanes, not all of them, but uh, a lot of them, as well as the reconnaissance planes that are in in Okinawa, as well as mainland Japan, uh, they should have been relocated to Taiwan. And then the third thing uh, would be that the um, U.S. and Japanese governments would invite uh, Taiwanese forces 
to participate in the multilateral training that was going on in the South China Seas at the exact same time. So China would have gone ballistic. But China needs to be told uh, that there are going to be consequences every time it does something to Taiwan like that. And until you know the two countries stand up to that bully, uh, you know we're going to see we're going to continue to see China doing that. Well, so I know in the post-war constitution of Japan, there's a lot of um, restrictions on how Japan can use its self-defense force. They technically don't have a military. Uh, how how does that affect what Japan can and can't do as far as China and Taiwan? Uh, if uh, if China were to uh, directly attack uh, Japan, then its self defense, you know, clause would kick in. Any nation has the right to self self defense. Um, over the years, it's expanded its legislation on what constitutes a threat to Japan and how to employ uh, the forces. So, um, as Prime Minister also. Uh, mentioned that I alluded to before that you know a threat or a attack on Taiwan uh, would have a direct impact on Japan's survival. Therefore, under the 2015 legislation or the interpretation of that, um, the self-defense forces could be deployed. The question is, how would they be deployed? Um, and there are no uh, real guidelines about that between the U.S. and Japan, uh, and uh, there's no uh, defense arrangement between Japan and Taiwan. Uh, the relations between the two countries were cut in 1972 when the U.S. recognized the People's Republic of, of China. Japan went a little bit further and uh, informally cut relations with Taiwan in 1972. I think that was premature, but they went ahead and did that. Uh, and um, so what they need to do is, uh, if they're not going to re-recognize Taiwan, uh, at, the, at the bare minimum, they should uh, uh, try to have a similar uh, Taiwan Relations Act. So um, Japan is a very, it's a country that emphasizes um, foundational legislation to allow it to do things. So in the United States, basically, if there isn't a law that stri strictly forbids us from doing something, the interpretation is that basically we can do it. Um, whereas in Japan, it's the opposite. Unless they have a law that allows them to specifically do something, they interpret it in a way that then they can't do it. So uh, that's, you know, it's like a positive and a negative interpretation of things. 